Hi, so I opened a case already with your um, uh, section for FCPX um, and the case number here is this one here, um, 603-892-742 and uh, my name is Eiko Simon and I have an issue here, I'm not sure if you guys can help me with this, but it's a contradiction in your help menu um, and it's something that's really, really out there happening right now and uh, you seem to be sleeping in your developing department. So I wanted to point this out to you um, in a more thorough way than just opening a case and I made this screen movie. Um, it has to do with the import of raw format footage. Um, I'm gonna make it much simpler today um, to show you my point, which is not footage, but it's actually raw image frames. So here's your help center, um, and I put in DNG, um, and I get immediately to this red code that there's very few people really using this, to be honest with you. I'm going to the more general section here, and I'm going to look um, up what kind of formats or raw formats would get um, keep, be capable of getting imported. So I'm looking at the still image format, and I see here this word raw. Now, I'm a photographer for 25 years. I do work between London, Paris, and New York, and... And you know, um, when it comes to this stuff, we have known it for 20 years in the photography field, and it's basically only about a year to maximum two year um, um, old in the film industry. And I think there lies the whole problem. So this RAW format, there's about 500 different camera RAW formats. And I'm gonna pick today, just to, to kind of show my point, um, the most generic one, and it's called the Adobe Digital Negative, Adobe DNG. Um, but you're welcome to try with a Canon CR2, which is officially something that you actually promote to be, um, you know, um, importable here. But I'm going to just show you with um, the most generic one that hundreds of millions of people are working with, Adobe DNG. So um, I am going to um, look at it first um, in Final Cut. I have a few frames here that I imported, and um, it looked at it in a very generic way. Um, as we all know, um, any kind of raw file is actually just data, it's numbers. Um, and it's up to the software to um, interpret and, and put the algorithms on top of it and, and make the numbers show up as little pixels, as an image. So a lot of these um, files are actually wrappers. So the DNG, Adobe DNG is definitely a wrapper. Um, and it has always a, a, a JPEG thumbnail embedded. It doesn't matter if it's CR2, if it's a NEX from Nikon, or if it's any other format out there. They have it's a wrapper with a thumbnail inside. Now this will play a big role in a in a in a few minutes, um, and why that is. So I imported them um, from actually a sequence, which is a series of DNG individual frames. Um, but I didn't want to get complicated, so just I, I just imported simply um, individual frames. And as you can see, you know, obviously there is nothing happening to them. They have very often this kind of purplish or greenish tint. I put them on a timeline, and um, it's all viewable. Um, now, naturally, the the benefit of, of of raw files is the following: if you overexpose four stops or underexpose four stops, you can save the image. It will look flawless. You take any kind of AVI, your QuickTime movie, that is already pre-done, a 444, whatever you want to call it, 12-bit 444, you have latitude of half a stop. A stop already things get noisy or get burned out. With RAW, you're actually looking at numbers, and these numbers then can be converted and translated into color images. So it's not a pre-made pixel that you um, are going to alter, it's actually a number. So this is why RAW data is so important. Now, when I look at this and I start working in colors and, and start making color corrections on this, I don't get anywhere because it really looks at it as if it would be a normal JPEG. Now, here comes the, the problem. It's not looking at the internal JPEG, and this is a little bit odd. So if it were not to look at the JPEG, then that means it does understand this, the, the actual raw data and makes its own JPEG. And if it can do that, then it would be fantastic. I could go into um, changing colors and things would be just seventh heaven. But your FCPX is not capable of doing it, although it does understand how to recreate a thumbnail. Now, why do I know it recreates a thumbnail and completely dumps and ignores the internal one? I'm going to show you. I'm going to open up one of these frames in Photoshop and I'm going to open them up um, as an individual frame. This is the CN CDNG, CNDNG um, clip actually. And I'm going to take any of these files, let's say this one here. Um, the last time it was modified was March 25th, so already a week ago. I'm going to open it in Camera Raw, and I'm now going to you know, play with it. This is the back of a wine bottle, by the way. 
So I'm gonna take some preset and boom, there you go, already something happening. White is white, black is somewhat black, but it does the you know generic kind of um, correction. Now, um, now I were if I were to really play with an individual file like a photographer, I would start working here, and the, the latitude is just absolutely incredible. This is why a lot of filmers right now are forced to work with raw footage, and and a lot of editors have no clue what to do with it. So anyway, I'm looking at this now, and we as photographers, we know we can do this thing. It's a little trick, and it's embedded here in this software in Photoshop. You can actually update the internal JPEG thumbnail preview. You can put in a medium size, a full size embedded JPEG. You can make it fast load or slow load. Let's just say I'm going to do this. It's now updated the internal um, JPEG. I'm going to say done and I'm going to get out of here and I'm actually now going to import this file into Final Cut and theoretically now the wine bottle should show correctly. So I'm going to do it with a couple of these frames because I don't remember which one it was. So I'm just going to take these ones. Just take a couple more. One of them should now have um, the black corrected and the white corrected. And um, let's see what happens. So I'm going to just say copy the files. Um, and I'm going to say do not alter it in any way, shape or form. I don't really care about this and don't analyze anything. So theoretically Final Cut now should look at the updated internal JPEG. And um, here you go, it does not. So um, it creates its own JPEG again and just you know completely dumps the internal one, I assume. But if Final Cut Pro is capable of actually understanding this wrapper, the content of the wrapper, which is just numbers and it's not an image, that begs the question, why am I not capable now to continue edit this thing, especially when it comes to color? The moment I would touch color here, it treats this like a normal JPEG and has only a latitude of about half a stop over an underexposure. Now I leave that testing to you because otherwise my video gets way too long. So the real challenge here is, you know, a third of us videographers out there, we are now being asked to shoot in RAW because it's much safer and it has much crisper imagery. And then Final Cut does half the job and then just completely stops. And you have to understand, this is the same thing. I just bought a Ferrari car from you guys and you are only giving me three wheels. You keep one wheel. I'm completely crippled now. I cannot even continue here. So I'm really stunned, I'm baffled, and I'm stupefied that there is nobody out there who actually is talking about this and saying, fix this, you know, either let us treat the, only the thumbnails of the, of the DNGs and let us, let us do it on the timeline and edit with it and uh, consider respect the thumbnail that's embedded. We can do it somewhere else if you don't do it. Or if you are understanding the raw numbers and you are making your own thumbnail, which is basically this here, why would you not let us really access the raw data properly and not just with this um, you know, color wheel that you have, which is all kind of 300 years behind of what we photographers usually have? Um, where is the interface? I do understand there is um, a plugin that you guys have, which is the red camera plugin. And this is also a complete oddity. I know only 500 people know use this, this, this really really bad red camera. There has not been one single movie this Oscar or the last Oscars in LA in Hollywood that ever was shot with a red camera. But there is about 300 million photographers and half of them are doing video now with your software. And we know about RAW and you don't have a plugin for us but you make one for red? This is completely odd. And then when I kind of try to circumvent it by just importing a single frame, which is much simpler than actually having a plugin of a whole sequence of frames, you fail. I don't understand. You know, where is, where is the department? Why are you saying in the help menu you can import raw files when you clearly cannot? Because afterwards you can't do anything with it. Again, the fourth wheel is missing. So is your developing team in hibernation and not talking to the people who make the manuals? I'm really stunned by this whole thing. So please, you know, look at this um, in a very thorough way because there is a huge community out there and the, it's being blocked everywhere. And I don't want to start working with DaVinci Resolve or with Avid or with Premiere. You know, they all have a little bit the same problem. You guys can fix this probably in a second. Um, but I don't know why nobody is really promoting this. So um, please help if you can um, or show me if I have done a really major mistake here. Thank you.